Hello, my name is Stephen Frank. I'm a professor and deputy division head of radiation oncology and executive director of the Particle Therapy Institute at the MD Anderson Cancer Center. Today, we're going to be talking about the myths and facts of prostate brachytherapy. Nothing I will discuss today will have use of any investigational products during my presentation. There are a number of myths of brachytherapy that are translated to patients and communicated with respect to age, body habitus, radiation exposure to the family, cure, long-term outcomes, rising PSA within three years, also known as a bounce, patient satisfaction, patient reported outcomes, penile shortening and regret, surgery after brachytherapy, salvage treatment, secondary malignancy, hair loss, cremation, innovation of brachytherapy, the value and the future of brachytherapy. Over the course of the next few minutes, I'll be discussing each of these myths and providing some data to describe what the facts are with respect to brachytherapy. So the facts on age are that brachytherapy is indicated for men of all ages. Recent study published by Langley et al. in the British Journal of Urology International looked at patients who are less than or equal to 60, giving low dose rate brachytherapy and found that at five and even 10 years, the relapse-free survival for low, intermediate, and high risk was 98, 96, and 92% respectively at five years, and 95, 90, and 87% at 10 years. And so for men less than 60 years of age, Reiki therapy is an outstanding option for curative intent. With respect to body habitus, for patients with a large body mass index or obese, Reiki therapy is an excellent option for these men. Body mass index is not a prognostic factor for PSA, failure, and survival. And this was published in the British Journal of, Uro of Urology International with Dutch men treated with brachytherapy. The outcomes following treatment for men that are obese are, are very good. And in fact, an ultrasound template guided implant is an excellent approach to the management of these patients to get the radiation treatment to the prostate with curative intent. How about radiation exposure to the family? Well, the facts are that the radiation exposure is equivalent to flying from New York City to San Francisco. If we look at the lifetime exposure to the patient, it's roughly approximately 0.1, can be up to 0.55 millisieverts. Whereas a trip to New York City our trip to San Francisco from New York City is 0.12 milliservies per trip. So radiation exposure to family should not be a concern to patients and their loved ones. They're allowed to sleep in the same room with them. They're allowed to be around all other members, even children. But we do recommend that children don't sit on a direct lap following the treatment during the course of the delivery. How about the facts on cure? Reiki therapy is a curative treatment. If you can achieve a PSA of 0 0.2 within four years, the, the ability to be cured 15 years later is up to 97 to 99%. This is based on recent publication by Dr. Crook et al. And in our review of 14,000 patients around the world who've been treated with Reiki therapy. What about the facts on long-term data and outcomes? Brachytherapy is an excellent outcome for patients with low, intermediate, and high-risk prostate cancer. This is work from Peter Grimm and a multi-institutional database, which looked at every publication that had a minimum of five years of follow-up in 100 patients within low, intermediate, and high risk. And brachytherapy comes up out on top in terms of PSA-free progression, as well as long-term data with respect to any other study. So there's good long-term data, and in all risk stratifications for patients with prostate cancer. How about patient satisfaction? Well, the facts are is that patient satisfaction is greater with brachytherapy. This was a study that came out of MD Anderson, Dr. Blanchard et al., and basically showed utilizing a radar plot and patient reported outcomes that urinary incontinence was less, sexual function was better, 
and overall patient satisfaction was higher. Urinary incontinence is rare and sexual function, as I said, is superior after brachytherapy, both at 12 months and at 24 months. This additional study that showed sexual function at six months, one year, three years, which showed that brachytherapy does better than external beam and does better than nerve sparing radical prostatectomy within these time points. How about the facts of penile shortening and regret? Well, we don't see penile shortening and regret following brachytherapy. And this is a study that was published in Urology in 2013 that showed with radical prostatectomy, the penile shortening and regret with reduced penis size happened in almost up to three and a half percent of patients. Whereas ADT also caused some penile shortening in roughly two and a half percent of patients. But this did not occur following brachytherapy alone. And how about the facts of PSA rise within three years? Well, the benign PSA balance is common within three years of implant and no, nomograms that have been published were based on data that were less than three years, less than two years. And so benign PSA bounces occur in up to 40 to 50% of men. And so when you look at the actual outcomes in terms of survival probability versus the prostogram, we can see that outcomes following brachytherapy are even better than predicted. And so rises within three years are most commonly a benign PSA bounce and should just be observed. How about the facts of secondary malignancy? The facts are that the risk is the same with brachytherapy as surgery. And that's based on this meta-analysis, systematic review, meta-analysis, looking at bladder cancer, colorectal, rectal, lung, and hematologic malignancies. And brachytherapy versus surgery showed no difference in secondary malignancies. Many suggest that as a myth, salvage surgery can't be performed following radiation. However, the fact is that salvage surgery is an option following brachytherapy and has been published in numerous publications over the years. It requires a high quality team who have experience, but it can be done following recurrence for patients that were treated with brachytherapy. But what about salvage brachytherapy following radiation? Well, salvage brachytherapy is a great option. This is a based on the phase two data, RTUG0526 by Crook et al. And basically show that the patterns of recurrence following prostate brachytherapy as salvage is very low, even about 5% to 10 years. And that the, the biggest risk is distant metastatic disease that can occur in 19% of patients. Salvage LDR for post external beam recurrence provides rare local failures. There has been noted to be 14% late grade three and no grade four or five toxicities, but distant recurrences are still an issue 10 years later. And the facts on seed migration, asymptomatic seed migration can occur after three years. And this data was published by Dr. Malitsky and the team in Prostate International and shows that these asymptomatic seeds can migrate to the lung, bladder, and even in the liver. What about the facts on hair loss? There's no data to support hair loss following brachytherapy. Questions come and myths about the cream, about patients can't be cremated following brachytherapy. But the facts are that cremation can be performed safely at any time following brachytherapy. And this is published by Dr. Q in the Journal of Applied Clinical Medical Physics. Some have argued there's no innovation. However, MRI-assisted radiosurgery increases precision and can be called the fourth generation of brachytherapy. Each step of the quality assurance process has moved away from ultrasound and CT to MRI-based due to superior soft tissue delineation of the prostate, seminal vesicles, bladder neck, apex, and external urethral sphincter. On the right, you can see a dominant lesion identified through T2 weighted scan, DWI, and ADC maps, and then plan on MRI with contouring, then implant with MRI, post-implant assessment, and then in follow-up. All to monitor how patients' outcomes are following brachytherapy with MRI-assisted radiosurgery. surgery. And how about the facts on the value and future of brachytherapy? Brachytherapy is the most innovative, cost-effective, curative, excellent quality of life, and has high patient satisfaction. And utilizing MRI in every step of this process does not increase cost to the healthcare system. 
So the last few minutes, hopefully I've better communicated how the myths of brachytherapy have been converted and communicated as facts of brachytherapy. It is an excellent outcome, an excellent treatment option for the right patient and should be considered for patients with low, intermediate, and high-risk disease. Thank you for your attention.